Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. It's Pierre here with the Groundbreaker series from Local Logic. Thanks so much to Tyler and Sam from Open Door for joining me today. I'll get into intros in a second. First, just to set up so everybody knows who we are, right? What the Groundbreaker is. The, this series focuses on the people, the tech, and the real estate projects that are really moving the real estate industry. Right? We're streaming uh, usually live. This one will be recorded because I hate lag. <laughs> so as I solve my lag problem, it'll be live. Uh, but we usually stream live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and we're going to be using these recordings also in podcasts and, uh, and on you know, documentation so people can read uh, and, and you know, ingest this any way that they like. So our goal with these conversations is to dig into authentic questions, inspire curiosity, and really take some interesting topics head on with our guests. And so today we have Tyler Hickson. Tyler is the Director of Real Estate Partnerships and Strategy at Open Door. Thanks, Tyler, for uh, joining us. Thanks. And Sam, Sam Westelman, he's a Brokerage Collaborations Manager. He's, they're going to tell us in a, in a second what the differences are in those two roles. Uh, Tyler's started in public education, which is quite a journey uh, from, from public ed into uh, real estate. Then you became a realtor. You worked in a brokerage, you have done home sales. So you've been on both sides of the table, which I love. I have also, I started six years, I was on the brokerage side in New York. Uh, and uh, at Open Door, you've been there since 2016. So going on four years, almost almost five. You worked in operations, BD and growth. So fantastic and thrilled to have you here, Tyler. Thank you so much. Sam, my man, Sam co-founded a coal banker team. So also again, real, real real estate experts in a real estate tech company, folks, people who know the business. Um, he was legitimately dominant at that broker trip for in the Northeast for about 15 years. Open Door was a completely logical uh, progression for him because he was always looking to get better serving for his consumers. Uh, he sensed the changing role. And uh, when he's not on the clock talking to agents, he's off the clock talking to agents. So Sam, thanks so much for coming along. I can relate so much to your background as well. Uh, when Trulia launched in 06, I was working at a brokerage and I was like, this, this is the right thing. And and I immediately got got the job. So let's 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 dig in. First, let's let's get a lay of the land. What's the difference in both your roles, uh, Tyler and Sam? <laughs> Sam, do you want to take it? No, you go first. All right. Uh, so you know, I've been in Open Door for almost five years. I came in. Uh, my job offer was, hey, we we would love for you to come in and help us figure out how to buy homes off the MLS and how to buy homes through listing agents. Uh, these are the highest intent sellers out there. Their home is already for sale. It's on the market. Uh, help us go figure out how to bridge bridge the gap between us and, and, and the industry. Uh, so I said, sure, sounds simple enough. <laughs> and uh, so over time, I've always kind of stayed on the agent side, working with agents in different capacities. And so from helping build out operations to then uh, doing a lot of uh, outreach and speaking at brokerages and different industry events and doing a lot of awareness and education and, and kind of growing growing our reach within the agent community and helping agents uh, understand how they can leverage Open Door as a tool to convert more clients, increase their business, uh, mm -hmm. and not see us as just some you know existential threat or you know whatever you know kind of misinformation is is out there. Um, and so with that, it's turned into to launching a few different you know, referral programs and now our new listing services and our, our um, you know, double transaction service. And uh, with that, has been able to expand, expand the team. Uh, and then we have Sam who, who helps lead on that charge uh, with all of our relationships uh, for these programs with the actual agents that are, that are partnered with us. Got it, great. Sam, you wanna give more color on your side? Uh, yeah, let me jump in. And just for the record, um, Tyler is and always has been my North Star. Um, I just, <laughs> if I just model myself in his image, it all goes well for me. Nice. Uh, and, and that's not an exaggeration. Um, when I came to Open Door uh, from brokerage, I mean, I was like five minutes away from being at somebody's kitchen table when I got to Open Door. Um, and, you know, that's a journey in and of itself that I'm sure we're going to talk about. But we are. my thought process when I got here was to shower intense amounts of love on a relatively small number of independent agents at brokerages throughout the US. Well, I started in the East and then I expanded to the US, but um, over time as things have grown, it's become showering that same amount of love on a much larger group of agents. Um, it's been gratifying and I think that 
that in part it's industry acceptance, in part it's consumer demand, and in part it's just down to you know people like Tyler and me and our colleagues sort of um, making that message uh, digestible, making that message logical, making that consumer experience elevated. So, like I said, you know, it's it's really just making sure that the that the two parallel universes or the two electrons orbiting the nucleus of brokerage and open door have an opportunity at some point to sync. And when that consumer needs to be served, if we're in sync, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And that's what I see my job as. And, and just in case, thank you guys so much. That's fantastic color. And just in case people watching this maybe don't know Open Door because be, there'll be consumers and there'll be folks who maybe aren't really in the headspace of like what's going on right now because they're busy down in the weeds of their transactions. Can you give me, you know, one of you a high level, what's Open Door, you know, uh, uh, you know story? Yeah, so the core of Open Door is uh, we want to create a, a fast, simple uh, transaction, right? There's too many pain points within, within the overall uh, moving experience in the transaction. And so as much as we can reduce friction in that and create a, a way to buy or sell seamlessly, that's, that's the core of our mission. And our product for the first four years has been our, our cash offer product. So take like the, uh, you know, investor model and then like the retail buyer marry the best of both of those and that's the goal of the open door product so we yeah. want to make an offer at market value we charge a service fee for that uh our service fee you know is is on a range unique to the property depending on uh the price point how long we anticipate that home's going to take to sell on the market um how hard that property may be to comp compared to its its neighbors uh and then the seller gets control over the timeline. So they can they can move anytime from 14 to 60 days out. They can cancel the transaction anytime penalty free. Uh, it's really a great convenience maximizer for customers in order to get uh, you know, a fair offer for the house, but without and skip all of the you know, stress of showings and the hassle of repairs and the uncertainty of execution. Uh, and that's the, the core of the open door product. It's a fascinating model, and I've been a fan of it since the early days. Obviously, I know Eric Wu from Trulia as well, so you have a great founding team there. So let's talk a little bit about your time at Open Door. Right? You guys both seen Open Door grow and evolve in many ways already. Uh, Sam, you're there almost three years. Tyler, going on five. It was founded in 2014. So, like, what are your some of your favorite moments of like building a startup? And I want to just like defuse that we're open talk. Like, like life at a startup is fascinating. People don't really know what it's like, especially when you're building a billion dollar one. Like, you know, can you walk us through what that life is like? What what that story feels like? Yeah. I love this question. I totally I, love this question. For me, it was such a like surreal experience starting at Open Door. You know, less than two years prior, I was teaching you know, high school English in middle of nowhere, Eastern North Carolina. Uh, and then, you know, kind of stumbled in by accident to this scrappy startup in Phoenix. And we were, you know, 12 people in a loft space above a restaurant near, near downtown, wow. uh, you know, growing into multiple markets and doing, you know, then a couple hundred transactions, <laughs> you know, in any given month. And then uh, to watch that scale very quickly to, you know, 21 markets and thousands of transactions. And, uh, you know, we've done over 80,000 now in our, you know, going into, into five years. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's a, it's a wild thing. I, it's hard to pick out like individual moments. It's a lot of, I think back to like sort of the, the, it, the energy and like the atmosphere of working in a small group where everybody's wearing multiple hats. Uh, you know, I think back to my first six months to a year and sort of all the different things I was doing are now like full on job functions and organizations in themselves. And oh, amen that to stage, that. Like <laughs> you have an idea and you just run for it, right? You just go for right. it and see if it yeah. works and keep filtering out the things that aren't working and keep pushing on the things that are. Um, but I always loved like the moments right before we would move to a new office. Uh, so every, you know, so often we'd have to scale oh, up dude. the space and in those yeah. weeks leading up, you, you start seeing like, okay, people are sitting on the floor or there's, <laughs> I can't take a call because there's, you know, 12 other people crammed in this, this right. room closet. Uh, and, and so it's just, it's really fun. It, it's always really fun. Uh, it's hard work, but it's, you know. I love Tyler's um, point about, you know, seeing one of the many 
you know, job functions that you used to do blossom into not just a job function, but in cases, departments, whole departments. Um, it's so accurate. And, and, and to give you the other perspective, as Tyler sort of, I think he, you know, like he talks about wandering into this, you know, amazing environment. And I sort of, mine was much more planned. Um, yet still, even though mine was planned, I still came in with, um, with incorrect preconceived notions. And I remember somebody in the early days showing me the map of the you know 53 cities or something or 53 markets that we were supposed to be in um, um, over a particular period of time and I just had stars in my eyes. I just thought that that map in my hand meant that it was just gonna happen. We were gonna be in those markets only to arrive and find out it is such a grind. And it might be that you know it might be that that Denver is a lot easier than Dallas was because in between Denver and Dallas, you had Orlando and, and you had Tucson or something like that. It might be that it gets easier, but it's not that somebody hands you that map and says that's your manifest destiny and it happens. Um, my, my favorite sort of early, early days story was my first all hands meeting. And the company gets together in all the offices over Zoom um, and, um, and, it's, um, and it's hosted, it's high energy. There's a lot of people sort of giving great stories and what people are working on. And I look to my left and I look to my right and I just, you know, as somebody that's been doing brokerage for, you know, 16, 17 years, I look to my left and look to my right and I see the sort of the diversity of age and the diversity of, of specialization and just plain, you know, gender and ethnic diversity. And I'm thinking, wow, I am not in Kansas anymore. And, and the funny thing about that day, that energy that I felt there, I even misjudged that because just that morning I had read a story and it was you know, on the biggest real estate press there is. And I read that story and it was all about how Open Door is gonna do this and Open Door is gonna do that and the world's gonna take notice of this. And I thought, how juicy is this gonna be? My first all hands and we get this huge news story about us to discuss and that story never came up. Wow. And or meeting, a 60 minute meeting, that story never came up. And to me, that always has summarized what this thing is about because it's not about the flash. It's not about the, um, what's supposed to happen. It's about the fact that the next chapter of the real estate transaction hasn't been written and let's write it here. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I can't say enough about this journey. It's just so phenomenal. That's awesome, man. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about this journey at Open Door, and, and actually, I think you hit on a great point, right? There's a lot of press, positive, negative. I'm sure people watching this or who are, who are going to watch this are going to wring their hands, saying "Aha," you know, and and uh, you know, and like over your time at Open Door. So, yeah. what's it like as an employee? Here, you're an employee at this unicorn, right? You know, unicorn. For those who don't know, it's it's a, a startup valued at over a billion dollars. So, so you're at a unicorn startup. You have all this press coming out, and I remember this at Trulia too. This just positive, negative. What what's it like for you on a on a daily basis as an employee there? Yeah, I mean, Sam hinted on you know the fact that you know something like a big news story doesn't even you know get mentioned, and I think that's reflective at nearly all of the most successful startups, right? It's like those who focus re relentlessly on building like the best customer experience the lowest cost platform, the most, you know, seamless, you know, fluid kind of end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, customer experience there, or the, that's what drives results. Uh, mm. And so for us, it's, it's never about um, what anyone else is saying or what our competitors are doing or anything like that. It's like, we, we have our mandate, we have our goals, and like, right. we're going to go focus on that. Um, and, and we don't need to be distracted by anything that's going on outside of that. Laser uh, focus, yeah. In, in Sam and I's individual roles, right? We we have dealt with a lot of that kind of head on. You know, for me, both from uh, handling acquisitions and and submitting offers to listing agents and having those one on one, you know, negotiation and transaction conversations, um, you know, dispelling a lot of the myths and the rumors, and it, it we focused a lot on just basic awareness and education. So we would you know, open our calendars up to any, any broker who wanted us to come out and just talk, explain open door, open, open it up and show it. Here's exactly, you know, how our offers are structured. Here's how we think about, 
you know, valuing properties. Here's what happens during the inspection period. Here's how we get to closing. And here's kind of everything end to end um, so that agents could actually hear it from a source of truth instead of Correct. from, you know, whatever Facebook group they're, you know, they're trolling through that day. Dude, uh, a huge, 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 uh, huge point to emphasize there. And I think it's very true, you know, to the brokerages out there and people listening, like go talk to the company when you have these kind of questions, you know, they're willing to talk. You're not going to say go away. You're actually going to say, yeah, let's have a chat. I'll, t- I'll answer your questions. I think that's a really good point for people to hear that you're not, you know, up in a tower, unaccessible to the industry. Yeah. I mean, agents are our customers, right? So any, any agent who wants to, you know, uh, email me, you know, text me, call me. Uh, my information has been very public <laughs> for a long time and, and I'll get those all the time. And it's, and it's, those are my most valued customers. So anytime an agent says, Hey, what, how do I do this? Or is this true? Or, or what happens now? Uh, you know, those are always great opportunities just to connect and, and, you know, provide valuable information. And so there is no, you, know, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, we're locked away in some room in San Francisco, you know, we're, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, we're I'm here. Gonna I'm going to tell them one of our favorite stories. Um, we, we laugh about the industry reception question, how, how we're going how, how to be received. Um, because Tyler and I both have a track record of you know, going into a room of 75 agents and coming out with a room of 75 friends. Um, and it's just, it's just natural that you sort of, the, um, what cuts through that sort of initial tension or that doubt or that are we on opposite sides of this thing? Or are we at, you know, is, are, is this an existential threat to me, existential threat to me as an agent? What cuts through all of that is the language of putting consumers first. Right. And, you know, if, if you, you know, to sit in front of a room full of agents and talk about um, just how many times in the past week have they either whipped out a checkbook to write a check for a, an electrical inspection that they're never going to get reimbursed for. You know, here's 250 bucks to an electrician. I'm never getting back again, but they want to see that person get into that house. They want a successful closing. They just put right. their consumers out. And how many times a week do they do that? And if you tell an agent, I've been there, I wrote that check. The ink is still not dry on the check that I wrote, or you know, the fact of how, how often um, we put consumers ahead of ourselves and how little we get credit for putting consumers in, in, in interest in front of our own, then you walk out with friends. And I mean, I think every agent's got a story of um, how one of their toughest customers or one of their you know, most dissatisfied people ended up sending them five, six, seven referrals through the years. Wow. And I, I feel like my industry collaborations run parallel to that because a lot of times people just want to put you through a little test, just run yep. you through, you know, just run you through the questions and answers and then go, oh, you know what? Putting the consumer first, empowering them to make choices, getting them onto what's next, um, allowing them to maximize their financial proceeds and minimize their interruptions to their life. Yeah, that's the language I speak. And that's the language we all speak. Once you get to the core truth for agents that open door is a buyer of properties. So every listing agent needs an offer. Open door wants to make an offer. Like just come get an offer from us. We're happy to write you a cash offer in 24 hours. Uh, and once you get down to like just the basic principle, it's much easier to then, you know, kind of navigate the other conversations. Yeah, that's, no one, a, that's a great point. Yeah, no one was harmed in the making of this offer. <laughs> yeah, that's a great line. Uh, so, so we're gonna go into some more interesting topics. So those watching, I have one last question before we go into like business model, comp plans, like, you know, perspectives on the brokerage industry. I have one more question for those who are here thinking about getting into a startup and thinking about working at a startup. You know, I think like Sam, myself, Tyler, I think the three of us never woke up in the morning as kids and said, I want to work at a startup. Like that was not, which I just realized that on this call, like none of us woke up saying we're going to be startup kids startup people, it sort of happened to us in an organic way. There are definitely people who wake up and whose parents, maybe, you know, my kids will wake up one day and be like, I want to join a startup like my dad did. Right. But, but, but for us, that wasn't the story. So how, what advice do you give people who are watching this, who might want to embark on a startup career? Like, what you know, and I, you know, I'd love to hear your perspectives. Yeah, it's, and I agree with you. It was one that for a long time, never seemed like it would be in the realm of possibilities. You know, it's like, if you live in San Francisco, then like that's what you do by default, maybe. But if you're anywhere outside of there, it's like, 
you know, something that's like pretend. Yeah. Uh, it, and then I like fell into it. Uh, and it's amazing now like seeing just how many startups are out there and they're not all just in Silicon Valley, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're everywhere. It, my like two main recommendations are like one, think about like what's an existing problem you want to solve like what's an experience you've gone through that you're frustrated with something like you know buying a car from a dealership is a super painful long process right then if that's something that fuels you then you end up somewhere like carvana you know if you're uh, if you think r real estate transactions are too you know there's too many pain points and too much friction and it should be it should be better then you you can work for for open door um in terms of like where I would go if I was going to look and I said, great, I'm going to go find a startup. Where do I go look? Uh, honestly, like Twitter is a great platform. Uh, it's the most accessible in terms of user to user, I think, and, and following, you know, I follow a lot of like startup um, topics and threads and people are posting on there all the time. Hey, I'm looking for somebody who's skilled at this. I need someone to help me solve this. Um, it's a really great like direct recruiting platform that you can get out and just kind of uh, explore and, and, you know, potentially find a, a great job. That's great. So, oh, so open, oh, uh, Sam, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you have, uh, well, for me, I'll just say two things. One is it's, um, making the move from brokerage to the startup world was the, both the best and funnest decision I've ever made in my life. I mean, like, I can't wait to get up in the morning. Um, right. and I can't right. wait to, to work with the people that we work with. So that's been completely energizing. What I'd say is, that you better be super clear what your superpower is. You better mm. be crystal, crystal clear what your superpower is because you better bring it. Um, you gotta bring something. And, and the beauty of, of I, I guess, companies like Open Door is that they do recognize excellence in very narrow bands. Like if for some reason um, you're amazing with um, short sales um, in cold climates, um, and nobody knows that short sales and cold climates better than you, bring it. There's somebody that values that skill. Um, so yep. know what your superpower is, be able to clearly articulate that superpower. And then just, you know, it's, it's not much of an exaggeration to say that you're going to start every meeting and everything that you say within a meeting with, from my perspective of my superpower here is the, um, <laughs> here's what the data tells me. Um, yeah. And, and Doing it that way, what's great about Open Door is that we're able to assemble the pieces of superpowers in order for each project that we're working on. If we are going to, you know, for example, if we did want to be have excellence in that short sales and cold climates, we'd know the seven or eight pieces that had to be assembled. It's extraordinary. I could. That's totally excellent. That's excellent, man. That's excellent. So um, I'm actually going to plug something here for Pete Flint, which I didn't plan on doing that, but he, re he, he released a, a great PDF yesterday that talks about this point, how to 10X your career and really talks about somebody earlier in their career and how to build a career. Like we've, all three of us built careers sort of like maybe not meaning to until you got into it, obviously then you meant to, and you started to like, go, you know, get after it. But you know, when you were a teacher and you were a real estate agent and, and I was a real estate agent, I knew I loved tech. I knew I loved real estate and I, found Trulia and then took advantage of every opportunity there. And uh, he wrote a great thing. You should Google 10X your career, NFX or Pete Flint, fantastic guide to somebody early in their career or later in the career who wants to break into and really like define a career and make a career and how you do it. I think it's a fantastic uh, write up. So let's go back to open door. Let's get into some, some fun meat. So you started to become a brokerage in many markets, right? Uh, talk to me about the model, the comp plans, et cetera. How will it be structured? Um, you know, maybe why, I mean, I, I guess we already know the why you already gave the why, right. You know, I, you know, I think it's not, you know, too much to like to reiterate there, but, but was it always the vision, you know, walk us through how open door the brokerage now, which is really big and, you know, has a bigger footprint and it's growing what's happening in that business unit. Sure. No, and I'll actually give you kind of a complete arc of open door to get us, to get us to the, the new brokerage offering. Um, you know, we talked about in the beginning, we founded open door with the vision to make buying and selling a frictionless online certain experience. And so in our early chapters, you know, we focused on making it possible to sell a house through our platform, right? Sell a house in five minutes or less and get your offer. Uh, so this required a lot of things like building 
pricing models that could accurately price the home before and after renovations in near real time, um, build all the operational capabilities to repair and renovate homes at scale and high quality, build a transaction platform that streamlined the customer experience from end to end at the lowest possible cost. And, and then from there, we realized a couple of things. Like one, that more and more homeowners are interested in selling their home with the digital first experience. Uh, and two, that we as sellers of tens of thousands of homes uh, had invested these years in building the technology and systems to making selling a home fast and low cost. Right. So building a transactional platform that's like several orders of magnitude more efficient than the traditional sales process. We built a network of you know thousands of vendors, um, capabilities to assess the conditions of homes and understand um, you know the impacts of repairs and renovations to maximize sell price. Building out a huge network of buyers, um, both in, you know institutional partners and and retail home shoppers uh, who are actively buying homes with with Open Door. And at each step, uh, you know of the journey, we continually just listen to what our customers tell us. What are the questions they have? What do they want? What are they asking for us ad for advice on? And then using that to kind of define our product roadmap from there. Uh, so, you know, customers want to, many of them have asked, like, could they help us list their home? How should they price it if they do list it? Can we get off, mm -hmm. you know, can you get offers for my house from, from the buyers in your app? Um, they've asked for help on renovations. And so we, we've, we've, leverage all that to then build our, our list with open door product um, and building Very this cool. listing service and eventually a marketplace that'll make getting an offer from a buyer as easy as it is to get an offer from open door. Mm. And we think we have the, the capability to, to get that frictionless in terms yeah, well of the marketplace said. experience. Yeah, super uh, well said. So with our, uh, the new open door brokerage expansion, we're actively hiring um, agents as independent contractors come hang their license with open door they can keep servicing their existing book of business, uh, but they're mm. also then getting uh, access to our customers, right? They're Got becoming the, the, the licensed consultants for our home sellers and home buyers to navigate which of the open door products is the best fit for their unique situation. Um, from a role standpoint, it's, it's most similar to being on a high production team in that open door agents tend to get most or all of their production volume from open door, from from our customers and our and our leads, much like yeah. a, a, a you know a team lead is usually the rainmaker for all their paid channels, and then the agents are getting splits off of any deals they they close from there. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be the most similar, like closest apples to apples comparison for agents trying to understand like what it would be like to to be an open door agent. Fascinating. Uh, as an agent, Sam, what's what's your take on this? Like, you know, here's a, here's a, the open door brokerage model. Like, what's the comp plan like? Is it are you an employee then? Is it an employee? You're, is it an employee model like like a la, a la Redfin? I don't want to say you know I like Redfin. No, but it's, <laughs> a, yeah. no, it's, oh, it's an independent contractor. It's an independent contractor. Yeah, it's an independent contractor position. Yeah. Okay. So so here's the thing that that uh, occurs to me. I mean, uh, like um, I think Ty Tyler's very um, eloquent on that that notion of of um, what the consumer is going to, uh, how this heightens the consumer's experience to be able to have, have the range of options under one sort of distribution channel. And absolutely correct about that, that this is sort of analog to how a team works. And I always say about teams that, you know, teams, um, when, you know, it's, it's cling versus cleave. Um, and, and that is when, when the rainmaker is doing the right thing and providing both the opportunities and the environment to practice in, then those agents cling. Um, yeah. and, and as soon as the, as soon as the team leader stops either one or both of those, then it's cleave and it's over. Mm -hmm. And what we can expect from open door is that the, the size of the organization and the commitment to, oh, you know, consumer eyeballs, um, creating, um, early stage seller opportunities much more efficiently than virtually anybody in the industry. Um, there's tremendous separation between us and other outlets or other channels. Uh, we're, we're getting sellers, many, many more sellers than buyers, which first sets us apart. We're getting them incredibly early in their process, right? I mean, if you're sitting there thinking about how how it might be kind of an interesting and nice idea to move closer to your 
um, sister who's about to have a baby, um, I don't think your first call is necessarily to a realtor. I think it's much easier and much sort of lower stress that that first call comes to somebody like us. So at that ideation stage, we're generating vast numbers of seller leads. And to have the agents in place, something in that 1099 world, who was really good at forming local relationships and nurturing that early stage seller to the point where they're truly ready to make a decision right. and being indifferent to the choice, indifferent to say a cash offer, indifferent to say a trade-in on properties, indifferent to a traditional MLS listing with uh, vast amounts of features that a company like ours can put behind that. It seems like, dare I say, synergistic, <laughs> like, you know, with a early stage ideation plus the ability to nurture and yeah. form relationships coming together is like this tremendously um, cooperational model. And, and it just seems to make a lot of sense in that world. Got it. So, you know, I, I, I had this question I was going to ask you, but I'm going to combine it for a second here because I, I think it's uh, tangential. One is, do we need another brokerage firm <laughs> like, like, like in this space? And then the one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to combo with it is which brokerage firms do you admire today and who's doing it right? So, if, so we'll take those, you know, together, if you don't mind, uh, maybe Tyler, you want to take the first one? Yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the, the top side of that question. Um, so uh, we pretty much look at this through two lenses, right? Like what's different for our customers and then like what's different for the agents who choose to join us. Um, and for our customers, like what we provide that, that uh, traditional brokerage 99% of the time is incapable of providing is like distinct home sale options, right? It's no longer where the sign in the yard and the showings in the open houses is the only path to sale, right? So our agents have the ability to provide a you know, direct home sale option to open door, uh, a, a trade-in option where they can sell to open door and buy from open door if, if they find a house that's, that's, that we own that they, that they love. Um, doing the traditional listing. Uh, we then have our home reserve product for all those contingent sellers who also need to purchase where we actually mm -hmm. invert the process and say, great, we'll help you find your next house first. We'll buy it with our cash, get you moved in, and then we'll list and sell your current home wow. and try and marriage both like maximizing a profits with the convenience of not having to deal with the showings while you're living there. Wow. Um, so the, and as all these products we've kind of, you know, built around our partnerships with agents and they continually tell us like, there's no, there's no objections anymore, right? There's no objection that I can't overcome with one of your, with one of your products. It makes me feel pretty invincible, uh, which is a really powerful thing to hear, to hear agents say. Uh, and so we really have built, built around that and, and, it, you know, creates like a great experience and a great option for our agents. Uh, we're also a digital first experience, which is, not part of the, you know, the traditional brokerage model because we built from digital. And so we didn't have to convert from analog to digital in, in the process. Got it. So for Got like, it. if you're selling your home to open door, you can do that today in a like completely digital contact free transaction. Um, and we believe we can build, you know, we can build off of that into a traditional home sale product that is driven through a digital first, uh, you know, experience, uh, which is, you're going to be a fun ride for anybody who wants to, to join and be a part of. Wow. All right. So Sam, you tell me now, uh, which, which brokerages out there do you admire? Like who's, who's, who's doing it right? Yeah. So you ask who's doing it right. Um, I'm reminded of that idea. You know how um, Amazon gets into the space via books. And uh, if you're anything like me, you're sitting there wondering why anybody would want to have toothpaste delivered to their house in a cardboard box. And now, we all get toothpaste delivered to our house in a cardboard box. And wow, they started with books. I feel like to talk about who's doing it right in the brokerage space, um, there aren't a lot of masthead brands or, or any you know, national firms that you can point toward who are sort of uh, using this as an as a, uh, empowerment strategy for consumers. What I can say that the heroes of this are typically team leaders. And they're across multiple brands that do this, but it's the team leaders who sort of, you know, three years ago um, were, you know, working their darndest to figure out how to make an 
open door cash offer fit into their listing offering? Just mm -hmm. could they make that cash offer be a logical topic of conversation across the kitchen table with a consumer? Could they know how the mechanics of that worked? Could they figure out how they were gonna get paid um, if they brought that to the consumer? and then just really worked their darndest to work it in. Now, over time, in these past three, three and a half years, you know, we have, we've added trade-ins. We've added um, home reserve where we can go out and purchase the next home and give that agent 120 days to go back and get an offer on their existing home, not just the first offer, but the best offer, um, and to make sure that there was no double moves, no double payments, and just make that a smooth process. Um, things like concierge, where we are, um, we are allowing the local agent and the home seller to be the ones to determine which $10,000 worth of fixes um, are going to you know, pay back $2 for every dollar spent. This variety of services that we now offer, just like Amazon moved to that, it's these teams that worked hard three years ago to figure out how to put just one offer in there. Now mm. they look like heroes because they have a whole range of services and it makes sense as a comprehensive offering. And, and just to uh, ask a question for clarity, you guys, uh, Open Door is doing their own brokerage with their own independent contractors, and you're also partnering still with other brokerages. Is this a market by market differentiation? Is it a mix? Yeah. Like, how, how does that play out? I'm sorry. Um, uh, Pierre, this goes back to your original question about the difference between um, Tyler's function and my function. Mm. Uh, my job is to make um, collaborations with existing brokerages. And oh, got it. I said that, that when I started, my job was to sh um, shower tremendous amounts of love on a small number of agents. And now that small number of agents has grown, but these are independent brokerages of various brands, um, either local brands or local boutique brands. Um, they, can be, uh, they can be single offices, they can be multiple offices, they can be big teams. Generally speaking, I would say we my in my oh. third party brokerage collaboration role, um, yep. I, I work well with team leaders who do have that cling where, you know, the agents are clinging to them for um, sources of opportunities and for the environment to practice. I fit in beautifully there. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so we obviously do both, right? So we've got uh, myself was working on building out the, the open door agents uh, organization. So bringing on those, those agents, uh, as 1099 contractors within the open door brokerage, giving access to our to our products, helping them grow their business. Uh, and then Sam is working on with a lot of those same products, building uh, third party you know, partnerships and, and referral programs. We, ha we have sort of, you know, now going on like half a dozen <laughs> different programs we have that, that we're interacting with agents within the, the marketplace in, in all of our different cities. Uh, and so we have a lot of, of synergies there in terms of uh, what we're offering, just differences in terms of which groups are actually like focusing on yeah. today. Yeah. And ultimately, I mean, look, like people will see this as, and I'll be a consumer for a second, not a consumer, I'll be an agent for a second. And there'll be a group of agents that will see this and say, all right, like this is competitive to me, right? They're going to be in my office, but then they also, they're going to be in my market, but they also want to do a, 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 like a referral with me. But the reality is that is the market anyway. Like the market today anyway, you're up against, if you're at Century 21, you're up against Cola Banker. You're up against BHG. It's all owned by Realogy. Like, like you're still dealing with this reality of competition. I don't, I don't know if we're like, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of like, oh, this feels funny. But I think at the same time, it's also the industry. It's how we do things. I mean, you know, there's referral networks all day between leading RE and Remaxes and, and, you know, uh, I forget the real G one, uh, Cardis, I think, right. Like there's all these referral networks and real networks that happen. And so I imagine there's a lot of opportunity still, even when you see open door brokerage locally, and then your brokerage partner locally, where, you know, you're both competing maybe for the same listing, but at the same time, like there's two, it really levels the playing field at, at the same time, right? Cause there's this agent who has his offering, your agent has their offering and it's a fair you know, story for the consumer to choose ultimately. And, and not to put words in your mouth, but I just wanna give you, what, what, does that sound fair? Does that sound really like how you guys see it or no? Well, the, cons the consumer wins, okay? Um, um, if you've ever had a situation where, uh, where two agents contact the same prospective seller um, and then they're sort of 
discussing, well, who got there first or who knows that person better or who deserves it. The consumer decides. The consumer picks who they work with. And very much like that with, uh, with um, figuring out what method to market, the consumer should be exposed to the widest variety of options and whoever makes the most compelling case for getting that consumer onto their next phase in life um, with the most equity and the least hassle deserves that business. Um, I just happen to think that it, oh. it that um, I just happen to think that the, the person that, that deserves that business um, is that that person, that, that agent or that team that brings the most cohesive group of offerings and how they fit together and how you can strategically take pieces of each and create a solution so that there is that sort of, well, why don't we, why don't we both use the home reserve to buy before you sell and the concierge to improve the showing experience of your house to make the most, to take the most equity out of this house and to not lose that house you want to buy in a competitive market. I think mm -hmm. the agent that deserves that business is the one that can, can listen to the facts of what the consumer is talking about, translate those into a strategy, um, verbalize that strategy in a way that makes sense to a consumer who doesn't do this all day, every day, right. and, and, and build the confidence that they're the one to get that done. That's a lot, a lot of moving parts. Um, yep. And I think that we, I think that we stand both within our uh, 1099 brokerage and with our group of third party agents stand a great chance of being that agent that can do that. Great. So I'm, I'm going to switch, uh, you know, modes here. Thanks so much for the, you know, I think that was a really good conversation on open door. I want to talk a little bit about just what's happening in the world today with, you know, uh, diversity hiring, uh, also the role of tech companies. I mean, shoot, I think today, right. Is it, there's deliberation happening um, in DC right now, right. Around uh, social media companies and their rights, to, you know, as it pertains to censorship in the news. So, so let's start first with the first topic, like, you know, how does open door approach hiring and diversity, maybe, you know, um, economic inequality, is there anything in, 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 in the open door brand? I mean, obviously your, your, your founder is a diverse, you know, founder, maybe you can share with us what's going on in that world. Yeah. I mean, open door has always been, uh, like hyper-focused on diversity inclusion from day one. And so, uh, being, I think like the first approach or like, you know, first step in that process is to be, um, like open and aware to, uh, like the inequalities within the existing systems or like the infrastructure of how you recruit and hire and, and source talent. Um, the next is to then make like a diligent effort to like break through some of those, those barriers. Um, in terms of like working at Open Door, Open Door is filled with different employee resource groups and, and who's like employee created and led, um, you know, uh, groups and, you know, kind of mini organizations within the company um, that do a lot of outreach internally to the, to the rest of the employees and put on, um, you know, lunch and learns. We have speaker series. We have all sorts of these, these amazing sort of um, opportunities available to us to, you know, continually grow and, and educate ourselves and, um, you know, be, a, be an inclusive organization. Uh, and then we think about that, like, then you also take the same uh, situation, look at like, how do we think about that with our customers? Right. right? In terms of, um, you know, bridging the gaps that exist. And we know that like the country has a history of, you know, institutionalized, you know, segregation and, and things that have, you know, led to limited access for credit to um, people of color. And, and we look at like redlining and how the, right. you know, contributes there to inequalities between neighborhoods and, and that, you know, affects minority communities. Um, and so for our mission is to serve every customer, right? To empower everyone with the freedom to move. And so uh, part of that comes in uh, expanding our service area, being able to service more communities, more different types of houses, price points of houses, locations of houses. Um, and it's still very much like the early days for us as a company, but uh, being able to help everyone navigate the process of buying or selling a home and believing that a model for residential real estate has the potential to help minimize biases and empower more people with the freedom to move. And, you know, our hope is that we can help level the playing field for everyone. Hmm. 
Interesting. Super cool. Super cool. That's great. Yeah, I think it's a huge opportunity in the real estate space. I, th I, I think that uh, I'm going to have a talk on November 4th. I think it's next week about race and real estate uh, yeah. with a couple of great folks in the industry. And, and, you know, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's a huge opportunity. I think that tech companies are the ones who can really move this. I think it's hard when you're entrenched and when you're also very local, it's hard sometimes to think differently. Um, and I, 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 I can't wait to see what tech companies like open door do to really address this stuff. I think it's a really good opportunity. So what, what role do you think brokerages and tech companies play in this economic environment? Like what's, what's the responsibility here? Uh, it's like evolving at a dizzying pace, right? Like it's, uh, it's hard for me to keep up with and I live, you know, and breathe this world. So um, I, I can only imagine like for an, a, a single agent in a market to like understand all the options that are available. Cause I think that's like the biggest hurdle right now um, is awareness. There's now mm -hmm. new models popping up for rent to own and purchases, sales, transactions, renting, you know, second home, second home with second uh, home. Picasso, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's across the board. Um, and but I think that's like that in itself is prudent for agents, right? Because the role of the agent is is now changed so quickly that I think uh, you know a majority of them just aren't even a, a, aware of a lot of the opportunities they have to to grow and change and improve their craft along with it. And so the role of the agent, I think, is because of a lot of these these new tech companies and models is to evolve into a more consultative approach and really understand like who who are the tech companies in your market? What are the new models? And then how would each of those models be a solution to you know my last 10 clients, right? right. And then kind of help identify what that situation was um, where I could have provided an alternative solution. And then how do I know how to apply that to the next one that comes up? Um, you know, people expect convenience, right? They expect a premium service. They expect a, a custom tailored solution in many cases, because um, that's what the rest of our shopping, you know, and consumer experience is, is it's like right. becoming more hyper tailored to our individual, you know, desires. Uh, and you can do that as an agent. So being able to understand that like the listing, the listing and the for sale sign is not the only, or maybe even the primary like benefit or solution to this customer who I'm talking with today who has this, you know, uh, like distinct circumstance. And if there's a solution you can provide, you should, you should know how to provide it. Um, Cause ultimately that's going to lead to a happy customer who's going to tell more people how you gave them something that no other agent could. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Can I jump uh, in there? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sam. Okay. So uh, just to lead off, just, I want to say Tyler, nice job on redlining, steering, access to capital, um, these things, we need to shine a very bright light on these things. And, um, and I'm, I'm very pleased that our company sort of uh, walks that talk, so to speak. Um, and I will say that to me, the, the, the answer to this, what role do tech companies have, um, is to say that the, the, the transaction of the future, um, I don't think any of us absolutely know what it looks like. Um, but we are pretty sure it doesn't look like the transaction of five and seven and eight years ago. Yeah, uh, for sure. And, and that um, that to include more people in the in in designing that in the future, that, that transaction of the future, to include more opinions, to to empower more consumers, um, to get opinions and to participate in these in the creation of these things. I think that, that nothing is preordained about the transaction of the future. Uh, the final, you know, what it looks like is not known, but we do know that the more people of, 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 of a broader variety of demographics, uh, both economic and, and social demographics um, that are involved in this, the more likely we are to hit on a democratized solution. And I love the fact that, that Open Door really talks from moment one about bringing our solutions to where people are today not asking them to come to us. If, if, if you just don't want to move those 35 years of books out of that basement and that's where you want to be to sell your home, we're coming there. You know, mm -hmm. um, if, if you don't have $3,500 in cash to, to, to replace the carpet in the kids' bedrooms and, and, and you know, 
um, and paint the foyer, we're coming to you. And we're gonna give you an option that, that, that takes that into account without um, penalizing where you're at. So I guess for me and, and you know, being a later stage career person, I'm so pleased that the solutions of tomorrow are coming from um, a generation who now has a voice. I think about sort of when I was, you know, earlier in my career, earlier in my life, gosh, um, we had no voice. Whatever solutions were coming down the pipe were coming down from, you know, from Wall Street and were right. made by, made by um, uh, people 20, 25 years my senior with a whole different set of experiences. And now the, the experiences of tomorrow are coming from the people of tomorrow. Um, and, you know, couldn't be prouder, couldn't be prouder of, of my colleagues. Well, cool. Well, last, last two questions here and we'll wrap it up. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a great call. Uh, you know, and for those watching, uh, there'll be an index on this so we can track the moment. So I'll do this will be the first video that gets an index. Uh, and so, so real estate's local, so pretty fractured, right? And I'm going to, again, do a combo question here. Is it possible for one brand to rule all markets? And if it is possible, for, for that to be a winner, what's the factor that defines that 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 winner? I'll, I'll start with the factor first, right? Because I think that successful brands would be the ones that consistently ask whether they're solving a real problem, and then are they building the best customer experience? Um, I think the size of the real estate industry will allow for a number of successful brands, and it, it shouldn't just be like tech company or masthead brand, like who, you know, who's going to be the dominant player at any point, because for an agent, you should be thinking about this for yourself, right? Like you you are your own brand and whether you're an independent agent uh, who's running solo or whether you're, you know, running a, a fairly high production team, uh, you should be asking the same question. How do you then, uh, even in a localized aspect, it's still very fractured, right? You look at mm -hmm, somewhere like mm -hmm. Phoenix where, one in every 153 people has a real estate license, right? It's like, you can't throw a rock without hitting, without hitting a realtor here. Right, uh, right, true. <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact that like, I as an agent should be figuring out how do I like solve problems, deliver a better customer experience so that I can uh, grow my market share within my, you know, within my community or my area and really focusing on like, why are you doing what you're doing? And then how are you going to go about doing it better than everyone who's right around you? Great. Well, thank you guys so much, Sam. Do you have anything there at the end or? Uh, it's such a meaty question. Can we book another hour to do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know me, I, I never let 50 words do when I, I'm, when, when I can fit in 150. So, <laughs> so can we book another hour? Well, I'll give you a bucket. What, what, what are the three ways or three kinds of companies that you think make it, right? If you had to bucket the industry into, into like three tiers of why they're going to make it, what is it? Okay, so um, I guess my first bucket has to be reserved to the, for those, um, those business models um, and those agents who just say, um, you know, gosh, I wish Facebook would just become extinct and I could just set this plane down. Um, I think that for, uh, for a, a decent amount of time to come, there's going to be those, um, those agents who are locally rather dominant, have market share through sphere of influence, who do mm. nothing in the area of paid lead generation, um, who wouldn't know pay-per-click if, if, um, you know, if it sat down next to them for dinner. Um, and I think that group of, of, of agents will always, or for the foreseeable future, are going to have a seat at the table because they control large swaths of the people who are selling homes right. and the children and the relatives of the people who are selling those homes and it's legacy business. Um, I think that um, I think that there is always going to be a place um, in this world for um, for a smoothly delivered fully digital solution and I think about um, I think about somebody living in Texas that's selling two investment properties in Florida. Um, and uh, by the time they get on a plane, fly to Florida, um, meet with agents and pick who they want to go with, their margins on those properties are, you know, now a lot slimmer than they were before. And I think that person wants a, a nicely delivered uh, digital solution. And I think in between, um, I'm kind of reminded of, um, of, of consumers who uh, 
well, sorry for this diversion, but I remember being in a conference room and with clients and they had a, like a little five-year-old girl who was playing with her toys on the floor. And she looked up at her parents and she said, you know, mom, dad, what, what are we doing here? And they said, oh, Mr. Sam is helping us sell our house. And she heard that and she, she thought, okay. And then she went back to playing. And like four or five minutes later, she looked up and she said, so is our house sold yet? <laughs> <laughs> and I took a lot from that. What I took from that is that, you know, consumers have needs, desires, misconceptions, fears, and they rarely feel as free as that child to show their colors. To, to let go what they're feeling. And there will always be a case for something in the middle of the old school sphere of influence, no advertising agent, and the fully digital solution where it allows consumers to tell you what's on their mind and how can yeah. you make their lives easier. So I guess that's that interesting. Point, those are my three. That's interesting. Very interesting, man. Well, thank you both so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, we covered a lot of ground here. I think uh, there'll be a lot of questions hopefully coming to you guys. If anybody has any questions and they want to reach out to you, what's the best way to reach you? Who wants to take it? Tyler, Sam? Uh, for just, you can just, email, uh, yeah. A, yeah, the easiest one is email like agents at opendoor.com. Sam and I are Perfect. both on the other side of that. Uh, and so Great. We'll, we'll happily, we can even co-reply uh, if that'll help. Yeah, Great. I, agents I, at opendoor.com. Hit them up. Opendoor.com, yep. All right, great. Well, thanks so much, guys. I'll end the recording here. And uh, thanks so much, everybody, for watching. If you like the Groundbreaker series, follow us for more. Find Local Logic on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Follow our channel. We have three great shows coming up over the next three weeks. 11.4, we'll be talking about race and real estate. 11.11, we'll be talking to Ernest, a new startup in the space. And 11.18, we'll be going deeper into startup careers with a great panel with a bunch of early Trillium members talking about how their careers have changed from joining a startup. Thanks so much, folks. Again, follow us on all our social media channels.